Good morning, afternoon, or good evening. Every time you're just going to have a second, it's time for more Let's Play Training Simulator. Time for the Class 37 scenario. It is a winter snow. Take a train of milk tankers up to Dumfries. Make a collection on the way. Due to severe weather, today's attraction is a Class 37. Uh, seems I have a good response on the uh, videos for the Grandfield branch, so I'm glad that got some uh, views there, because I'm glad to be able to share some of this old content of this nature. And I'm going to go ahead and get that last Class 8 scenario at some point, like I said, but we want to go ahead and finish the... Um, port road section right now there is only two scenarios on the route right now as you can see but there are more on version two there are some user scenarios on version two there's the actual version of three and there's some user scenarios on version three i'm gonna have to convert again through the other a lot of the scenarios from port road version two and version three uh the steam ones i should be okay with because they're in the regular train simulator format at that point but uh, that assumes the steam scenarios work they may not work so we're going to find out over time if they work or not. But in the meantime, we have what we need for today. We have Ice Cream Man ready to go. We are now going to be the Ice Cream Man take us some milk. Let's get started on that, shall we? It's the Ice Cream Man. Well, not really. Just me. Uh, but we do have some tasks here. Just do some stuff and head to Dumfries. We'll look at that a little bit further as we go. But we're going to start at Dumfries. We're going to head to So it's like it is a full route run. We're going to go ahead and get our train ready to take off here. Because I don't think we have to do anything here. So into the cab. Uh, we are going to uh, head along our initial track offering here. You can see that we have no signals ahead of us, so we're just assuming the line is clear. What on earth is that? <laughs> Hello, Bessie. Brrr. Why are they greasy on the railroad track? Seriously, that's just hilarious. So reviewing our tasks, we are going to stop at Dalby Platform 2. We're going to couple to some cars at the Creamery. And then we're just going to head through a lot of side of uh, stations, head to Co Carnation Sidings. And then after Carnation Sidings, we're going to drop off more cars. We're going to stop at the depot. So that's basically what we're doing today. So if we stop at Dalbidi, I'm going to go ahead and remove... Well, first of all, I'm going to turn the wipers on. That doesn't cover much of the window, does it? Uh, we're going to go ahead and start braking in a moment here for Dalbidi. In fact, I'll see what our brakes are like right now. They are pretty darn good. That seems unnaturally good. We're going to come off of that. There's our first signal, green. I did not want full brakes, but it went on for a moment there. Okay, keep going to full brakes. Okay, so we're coming to a stop inside of the platform area. Let's take a quick look at the train as we stop. Driver, please reverse into the creamery siding and collect the milk tanks for delivery to Dumfries. Ensure all junctions are set. Who's going by? Hey, Dumfries or Kirk Cud Bright Service. That looks like it's going to make a stop here. Let's take a quick look at that since we're not under a timetable. We're just going to watch this guy come in here. Is he stopping? You bet he is. All right, time to worry about our own train. Let's get back to our cab. Let's look at the map and make sure the junctions are set for where we need to go. We're going right in here. Ooh, where are we right now? We are, uh-oh, where are we right now? Oh, we're back here. Okay, so we're just gonna head into the creamery, which is this. You know what, all junctions are not set. All junctions are set. We're gonna head into the creamery, we're gonna pick up our sidings. 
or our uh, cars rather. Let's bring that back up. And head backwards. Oh no, 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 don't do that. Why are the brakes on? Why are the brakes on? Oh, brother. They're leaving at the same time we're backing up. Nice. Now, while I have seen some drivers literally just crash their trains into cars, I have actually had cars derail at 0 0.5 miles per hour. Uh, maybe it works in Train Sim World. It doesn't work very well in Train Sim Classic. We're just going to back up gently here. We're going to hit the brakes as we come to the cars. There we go. Well done, please proceed toward Dumfries. So we head to the end of the train now. We are almost right against the, the bumper, but that's perfectly fine. We didn't quite hit it. So we're gonna head forward now and continue our journey. Our perilous journey taking milk towards Dumfries. What a dangerous job. Oh, we are at a signing limit of 10. Well, I did not notice that, did I? Oh, well. I'm going 12. Normally, I'm on top of that being a career scenario player, but uh, I didn't notice that this time. Now we're in the 40s. We can speed up now. So now officially leaving Dumfries, our speed limit is 40 miles per hour. And we are going to be entering a 60 mile per hour section. A lot easier to get up to and maintain speed in a class 37 if you ask me. Oh, we didn't make it to 460 in time. Well, I'm off to a bad start, guys. I must be just a little distracted today. Oh, well. I'm going to keep my speed at 50 miles per hour maximum because there is a 50 speed board coming up. And I'm losing way too much speed, so I'm just going to try to maintain right now. A small burst of speed. Well, we're on uphill. That's why. That's why we're losing speed. Okay. So I have to maintain some power to make sure I continue going at 50. Actually, knowing about that uphill, I can actually go a little faster for a moment and let the train slow itself down. I think I'm going to do that. You know, South Loop Platform it is only a go via checkpoint. So are the next three stops as well. They're going to be go via all the way through Maxwell Town. We're not stopping at any of them. Okay, train, do not ruin my confidence in you. Slow down in time, please. I need to put brakes on. I had no choice. I had no choice. Here we are through Southwick right now. Green signals continue.
Much of the time, the lines do not intermingle with each other, so we're going to generally have signals for each line, and that's it. I'm not sure if you can actually do reverse line workings on this ver on this uh, route. Uh, I don't know if the tracks were designed for mixed line workings. They might be uh, for crossovers at the stations, but maybe not for mixed line workings. Well, 60 is now our speed limit. We are going 60. I'm trying not to break it, but this is proving to be a challenge. Because even a small throttle application is going to put me over, it looks like. Oh, now we're straight. Okay. Now I can actually put some throttle on to maintain. That's better. Figure out where the butter zone is here. I think 10% seems to be around while a little higher, I guess. Oh, 13. Don't like 13. 11? There's a 50 coming up anyway, so I'm just taking the throttle completely off. Our distance signal is indicating that we do have a green signal ahead. I feel like this is actually a station coming up. I don't have notes on the uh, TAS here as to what it is because Kiliwan is the next listed station. So if we take a quick peek ahead on the HUD here, on the map, you can actually see I was right that another station is coming up. We're going to be going through that station, Kirk. Kirk. I can never say it right. Kirk Gunzian. So here's Kirk Gunzian, I guess is how I'm going to say it. Looks like a little bit of the track was missing there. The uh, snow must have been covering part of it. I'm going to assume that's a signal box building that we just passed by. Distance signal says we are green ahead. Other side also has a distance signal saying green ahead. I think this means there's a train coming on the track in a moment on the other side. I missed a whistleboard on the way through earlier. Oh well. Oh, that was my whistleboard. Never mind. Uh, Kiliwan is coming up. Another whistle board. cars were still on the track that is dangerous long goods is now going by
viewing where we're going to end up next. You can see four miles away, we're going to have Drungans. I have a feeling there's another station before that. I've just, uh, again, I still don't know the route enough to tell you all the stations. We do have a road crossing coming up, though. I know that because we saw a whistleboard. Yeah, there's a station coming up here, so we're going to have to check this one out again. There's the uh, crossing. Let's see what station's coming up here, shall we? Oh, there it is right over here. We have Lockinhead. Lockinhead. I seem to be in a good maintaining position for speed. I've not really been adjusting the throttle for the last couple of minutes. I'm sitting at 58.4, so I may need to move it up just a wee bit, but right now I seem to be holding well, especially because there's a 50 coming up. I need to drop it anyway, so I'm going to actually... Oh, there's a downhill coming up as well. Yeah, we're going to have to definitely put the brakes on for this one, I think. Here's Lockin' Head. You saw the train do a big bounce there. That's something that happened on old Railworks routes in the day, where you actually had to... Uh, when you actually knew when you were crossing from one gradient to another because the train would just lurch up and down like that So that literally was just crossing onto the downhill gradient. and That's all it was. That's literally all it was So I'm gonna try to maintain a little speed through the brakes now because that seems to be the best way to uh, Hold my strength hold my power as we go. It may not be the right way to do it But the way the game is concerned uh, there's really the best way to do it Here's another 60 coming up here. Let's just take a quick look outside here at the uh, view outside. There's our class 67 traction for today. And as you can see, we have a number of, uh, I'm not really gonna be able to get back to the other cars. So I don't think I'm using the right controls. For, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm just not gonna use it because it needs the buttons, but there is number uh, D6785, this was numbered in the pre-tops uh, numbering. So 6785 is our traction for the day. Oh, it looks a lot better in the sunlight, doesn't it? There's a good view of it right there. Beautiful view. You can see the milk cars behind it and the brake vans. So let's get back in the cab. We're running at 49 right now, which is just fine. Hmm, something loading there towards uh, up the track. Ooh. There's your dump freeze to Castle Douglas service. Castle Douglas is not fully implemented on this version of the port road, so it basically would be um, probably going off a portal. On a later version of this scenario, I'm sure it was revised to allow the train to actually stop at Castle Douglas and stay there. I'm sure that did happen in a future version, but we're only going to play the original version of these two scenarios. Future scenarios, we will see uh, trains for sure probably stopping at Castle Douglas. I also have been taking a peek at Keith Ross's YouTube videos, which are still on his channel from nine years ago, by the way. And uh, they still have... Um, they, they show places like Carlisle in the uh, videos, which I don't think Carlisle actually became part of the actual Port Road. I think it might have became part of Western Lines of Scotland, but as I go through the versions of Port Road, I'll see if I'm wrong on that, or if I'm right on that. 60 is now our speed limit, so we should go ahead and speed up. We are going through Drungans up main. We are through Drungans up main. There is Maxwell Town up main coming up as well. We saw a track heading off. If you're wondering what that track was, let's take a quick look at the map. That was the um, 
this. That was the sightings entry. The ICI sightings entry, and they head over there. And you can do some work over here. That's what that is. Now, Maxwell Town, I believe, was also a station, so I can actually say that Maxwell Town Station is probably coming up. We have a green signal, the, auto, the electronic green signal this time, ringing the bell in the cab. Let us know that, hey, you better be alive in there. We have a 40 coming up, so I'm starting to slow down a little bit. As we're getting a little more leg lowing into the uh, sidings. Driver, please slow to stop at Carnation Sidings. Did I say Camelon? Carnation Sidings. Draw ahead of junction and prepare to reverse into siding. Roger. Train is indeed starting to slow down because I've left that 8% brake applied. Does he give me some control over exactly where and how I stop? I believe. Thank you. I believe that is a yellow signal. It is a single yellow signal. There are no signals between us and our next signal, our Carnation, I, that's a duh thing. There's no signals between us and Carnation Sidings entry. So we're, get, we're gonna be well under this 40 mile per hour speed limit. I'm not worried about the 30 beyond, that has nothing to do with us today. If we actually were to pull up to the next signal, we're actually gonna fail our task because we actually have to stop at Carnation Sidings entry. You can see that if I don't stop there, well, I'm gonna, if I slip past all the way to the signal, I may fall within the signal guidelines for coming to a stop at the signal, but I would definitely fail the task. So I have to stop in the orange anywhere. Even if I slip all the way through and only the brake van is in the orange, that is still enough to make the stop, and we can back up from there as necessary, as approved. Again, looks like some of the track is uh, showing some wear here, some of the ballast. We're getting into the area where some of the track still exists today, but the track going across to Strand Rar no longer exists. There is a, a junction coming from I Iyer, uh, as with some leg there. Junction coming from Iyer, but uh, that is the only section that really exists at this time today. I guess this is Carnation. The station, as you can see, looking at the map, that is actually just Carnation Siding. That is the Carnation Sidings. So we're going to draw ahead of the junction here. We were given a yellow, so it should be set for us. Oh, that track just ends. No buffer, nothing. That track just ends there. I'm going to put a little more brakes on just to make sure we come to a stop. There we go. Okay, come on. Get stopped. I'm putting the reverser into the other direction right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and use that to come to a stop because they don't seem to be doing anything else here. Are we on a downhill? Is that why it's not stopping completely? Oh, we want to stop here anyway, so stay here. Yeah, this is actually a stop task. Yeah, I should have just hit the brakes completely. So we're going to need to make sure the junction behind us is set. Let's we'll take one more look at the train here as we do that. There's our beautiful, beautiful milk tanker. Okay, driver, please reverse into sign number one and uncouple your train. Thank you very much. So we're going to go ahead and start reversing. Let's just make sure the path is indeed set. Uh, the path is... Oh, what the heck? That's what we need to do. And that's what we need to do. And side number one is actually this one. And this one. Oh, we had to do a lot of junction setting on this one, didn't we? So there's no blue at the end of this track, so we have to trust that it's correct. The blue coming in tells us that side number one 
is where we want to go. We're going to go ahead and back in now. Let's hop to the end of the train with our brake van, hanging around the brake van. We're going to head forward. Well, forward in this direction. Backwards. Oh, brakes can come off. Leaving a slight brake application to give me a little bit of control if I can. It looks like 15 is our speed limit going into the siding, so 15 miles per hour we cannot exceed. And yeah, remember what I said about there's a track here that's missing? There's no buffer on this track. That seems dangerous. That seems dangerous not to know where to stop. I see a buffer. I see me a buffer. Welcome to Carnation, where they make the finest milk that they no longer make. I don't know. Not else else to say that. I'm not sure if they're still there or not. If they are, they probably can't use trains here anymore unless the track still exists there. So now we're pulling in the area next to another set of tankers here. I am going to go ahead and put it next to the tankers just as a matter of convenience. Our, st our task obviously is a drop off task. We're not stopping here. We're just going to, we have to make our stop anyway, but it's not being tested. We're actually just going to do the drop off. Drink cold milk. Yep, that is exactly what I would expect on a carnation plant. Drink cold milk. That'll do. I'll actually go a wee bit more. Just a wee bit. That will do. I'm not going to go too much further in case something hits the buffer and crashes the game. So the task does tell us that we're going to take everything. I guess everything. Let's bring up the, uh, first of all, back out a little bit. We're going to go ahead and bring up the F6 information. You can see nothing. Well, that works. Oh, because I didn't bring up the cars. There's the cars. 2556 is indeed one of our drop-offs, or 25... Really? It doesn't say it. 2556 is not one of our drop-offs? 2556, it says... Yeah, 2556 is one, 2541 is another. So yes, everybody here is going to go. The one that we are not going to drop as a drop off is apparently 254... No, we drop it off as well. It just doesn't show the number above it. I guess... I guess there's another 2540 in this scenario that might break this scenario, so I'm hoping that the task does show it's completed. Let's just see if we can confirm that by taking this. And... I think the scenario is broken, guys. I think this scenario is broken. There's another 2540 car somewhere in the scenario that is causing this scenario to break. So I'm going to have to uh, fix that. I'm gonna have to come back here. We're gonna do this properly uh, as a drop off. I have to find out where the other 2540 is located and change him out uh, and poss or possibly even just change this car to another car and have this car uh, represented instead. I have not changed any stock in the scenario. So it looks like this is just a problem with the scenario where car number 2540 refuses to be recognized because it is located, where is it? 2540 refuses to be recognized because somewhere in the scenario there's another 2540. I cannot drop this car off and get recognition for the task. Notice if I try to move forward now, I have left the car behind, but because the car is somewhere else, the game thinks I need to drop off that version of 2540 instead. So I'm going to try to fix this. I'm going to try to come back to here, guys. 
Uh, that's really all I can do. So uh, I'll be right back with you as soon as I uh, can find a number for the milk car that I can use. I'm going to have to use a third party error for this. So uh, we'll get back to that. I'll check in with you right here in a moment. Well, I found the culprit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that long goods train that went by before, it actually had four milk tanks on it down here. And here, the second milk tank, number 2540. It turns out this is the only duplication in the entire scenario for the milk tanks. We have tanks number 2511, 13, 27, 29, 31, 34, 41, 42, 44, 51, 56, and 58, all unique. Uh, 2540 was the only tank that was duplicated. There were two of them in the scenario. So I figured the best way to handle this is to uh, change this one to say something unique. I'm gonna have to go ahead and make the change here. And after making the change here, I'm going to have to go and actually edit inside of the, or edit the task to make sure I'm still picking up 2540. So this is a two-step process. I'm gonna show you how to repair a scenario that does not work properly because of something like this. The first thing you're gonna do is go to change number. I'm in local swap, by the way. This is the local swap editor. You're gonna see that it gives a list of the numbers for the various cars. Now, if your uh, car or your engine or whatever you're doing, whatever you're connecting to does not show this list, you're pretty much free to make up whatever you want to use. Just try to make, keep it as realistic as possible for anyone who might be like, oh, you can't use that number. That doesn't exist anymore. Cool. Sorry. Uh, so in this case, we have a whole bevy of numbers that are available for us to choose from. So this is the list of cars that we are able to swap in. And I kind of explained earlier and I didn't really show you properly. So that window we were just looking at shows the uh, trains that I was looking at and it showed you the 2540 being the duplicate. Now, this is the list of cars that we do have to work with. So looking at the numbers I have, I did see that I have a 2511, so we're not gonna pick 2511. Uh, we have a 2513, we're not gonna pick that. 2527 is way down here. Right in that range, it gives us a lot of room in terms of what we want to, or what we can pick up. We have numbers all the way down to 2561. So there are lots of numbers, it's just a bit of a fluke that one number just duplicated here. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead, because 2540 was the number we were working with, I'm going to keep it as a 254 number because I think that's the right way to do that. So I'm going to scroll down to, uh, let's say, 2547. I like that number, 2547. We're going to change this to 2547 in the goods train. Mine is going to, for picking up is going to remain 2540. The reason I had to know which one I was changing is because I'm going to have to go back after I save 2547, which I'm going to do right now. Once I save that, it'll say, it, you're not seeing it, but it says scenario file successfully saved. So if I go back up to the milk tanks train right now, you can see that I am still showing 2540 on my train. If I go back to long goods, once again, now it shows 2547 down here. I now have to edit the task to make sure 2540 is still picked up in the scenario. Let's get back into the game, get into the editor, and we'll take a closer look at this. So here we are back in the scenario editor, at least I should say in the scenario editor, we haven't actually been here yet. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the train that we are now fixing. We are going to head to milk tanks. We're going to find an entry for Carnation's siding one. You can see that we still have to go to Dumfries Depot when we're done. I didn't get to show you that yet, but we're gonna go back in the scenario. We are gonna finish that in just a second. Let's just fix our task first. You see 2547 here? This is still here. So we need to remove 2547 and make it 2540. One of the reasons I made it a number any 254 is actually because I was swan to change one digit. So we're gonna do that. 2540 is one digit changed. That is done. We can now uh, take off back into the scenario. And when we go back into the scenario, we're gonna be able to go ahead and play uh, the scenario starting from Carnation Siding after we do the drop off. We're gonna head to Dumfries Depot Entry, Dumfries Depot Diesel. We're gonna stop our scenario at Dumfries Depot Diesel, supposedly by 103354, but this is not timetable, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll have to see how we do. I uh, noticed that there is a static constants clash with milk tanks all over the place. That's going to mean nothing. Yeah, we're not going to care anything about these static constant clashes. They're actually not going to cause any problems from what I've seen so far. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just keep right on going as if nothing was wrong. And uh, yeah, we're back in the editor and you can see our track, our train is sitting over here. And this is what we obviously started driving from this part of the scenario heading in the other direction. If we head back in this direction, by the way, the track does continue over here, but there is actually no ending to the track over here. I'm gonna actually just show you very, very quickly what this was in development in version one. This is different now, especially on Western Lines of Scotland. The road did continue all the way over to here through some mountains, and the track eventually ends in a what looks like a station complex. It looks like he did not have time to add this station, 
before the contest ended. So this is apparently where the station would have ended up. The track actually ends right up here as it splits in two directions and that's where his development ended for the purpose of the contest. So we're gonna head back to where we started. Just showing you what the line looked like over there. You can't actually do anything there in that version. You can see there's no sound effects or anything over here either. There's no sound domes. They're all over in this direction. So there's literally nothing over here. It's just plain featureless track. There's our train and there's all the cows that we saw at the start of the scenario, including one grazing right here. I didn't even catch him on the initial view, but he's grazing right here on the railroad track. Remember that steam engine that comes from over here at one point? He gets run over. I'm not going to show you the grisly effects of this, which is basically going through him. But uh, yeah, that's what we have to deal with in this scenario. So uh, that is that. Let's get into the scenario. Let's go ahead and finish this thing, shall we? Looks like I did things just a little bit quicker this time. The uh, steam train is currently making a stop at the Dalbini station. So we are going to uh, see him go by. Let's just watch him go by before I show you the reason I came back early. Beautiful. Notice I'm staying within the speed limit this time, so I'm not going to be speeding on this stretch anymore. Yay. He's about to run over some cows. He is on his way to run over some cows right now. That is not particularly safe. In any case, we're getting ourselves up to 40. I'm going to show you the reason I came back. We are going to hit the F6. We're going to hit that, and look at that. Car number 2540 is now associated with the task later on. This scenario is fixed. The task down here at Carnation, or at Carnation will work. I'll see you at Carnation Sightings. Okay, Carnation Sightings, take two. Let's get her parked this time and get her unhooked. So we're gonna come back to our buffer once again. As before, I'm gonna park the train pretty much right next to these other cars. I want the brake van at least lined up with the fifth car. It doesn't have to be flush because it's gonna risk us going right up against the buffer. So I'm just gonna try to get a little bit flush here if I can. So we're at the back of the third milk car on the other train right now. We're on the other consist, I should say, because there's no engine attached. Number four. And I think we are good to go right here for number five. I'll stop right there, far enough. Don't risk any further, always leave a little bit of room if you can. Back to the front of the train, we're gonna unhook. And as you can see, like I showed you before, 2540 is now shown. There's the nice big tall building, by the way. That is a huge milk plant. Uh, so 2540, and there's my milk tank. So I can now head down to this coupling right here, as I did before. I can now hit to uncouple this. And this time, the task does complete, and I'm told to take my loco to Dumfries for stabling. So now we can finish this scenario properly. Let's get back in the cab, and let's go ahead and take our loco to Dumfries for stabling. So leaving the Carnation siding number one, our stop at Dumfries, or our entry to Dumfries is 1.2 miles away. Our siding exit should be set. Like all the switches are manual except for the one out of the track. So that's the only one we have to concern ourselves with. I'm just gonna make sure we have no faulty signals here. So zooming in on our signals for a moment, looks like I am okay for our signaling. I mean, there shouldn't be any signaling really in here except for the shunt signals. They should be tied to these switches anyway. So we should not be passing any reds. As I look at the task, I have to take the train to Dumfrey Diesel. So I'm gonna make sure I stop at Dumfrey Diesel. Let's make sure our path to Dumfrey Diesel is set. Here's the depot entry right in this area right here. We're gonna be going to Dumfries Diesel, which is way back here. So I have to make sure this path is correct. From the looks of it, I believe we're gonna do this and this. And from there, I'm not 100% sure yet. Dumfries Depot entries right there. The track is automatically set. So yeah, we are good to go. And I think we are backing up into the correct station or the correct location when we get back. So I'll check further when we get closer. We can now go 40, so I'm gonna start speeding up.
30 is now going to be our speed limit, so I'm going to stop ourselves at 30 very, very shortly. We should have a green... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We might have to request a pass. Thank you. It looks like on the original route, on the original version of the scenario, probably also on version 2, it looks like these signals may be broken going into Dumfries. I remember it was like this going the other direction as well. We were actually told we had to request a pass. Let's just take a quick look at the track ahead to make sure that there is no problem. We are being routed correctly. I don't... Oh! Uh-oh. I see the problem. Our path literally goes through that crossing. So this train we have to wait for. We have to wait for this train because we would have gone through its path. It had the signal. It will now be going on to the other track. So we're going to see him coming along right now, as you can see. That's the Carlisle to Glasgow service. At this point, we should be able to get clearance to pass. There's the green. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Ooh, good eye on that one. Good eye on that one. So we are literally going across right now on a junction. The train was just on the track we're crossing right now. We would have had a bit of a collision if we tried to go through that. More than a collision, I would say. Would have derailed his entire train. So we are now under the 30 restriction. We should be able to pull into our spot up here, no problem. Just our engine. Not much to do here. So we are indeed pulling in right there. The track is set for us to get to exactly where we need to go. We had a green, so we have a minimum. You gotta be kidding. Oh, we have a green. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. Oh, that could, that would be a good case for a distance signal if it was still around today in that format. Wow. We know we're gonna have a minimum yellow at the next uh, signal. That much we do know. But we're not gonna get to it anyway. I was about to say the same thing for that signal, but I literally saw a red and I panicked because I thought the game broke again. Whoa, whoopsie. Darn it, gas being penalty, no longer perfect. I did redo the run, I was having a perfect run, just the uh, I shouldn't be speeding here anyway. Look at this, the deep one is right here. I need to stop right here and get in. Stop the train right here, please. This is a stop request, I can't move right now. But we will check the area behind us while we're waiting. We are indeed heading back onto this track, which is going to lead us into the wrong siding. Well, that doesn't work. We're going to the diesel, Dumfries Depot diesel, which means I need to connect to this, which means you're going, shush. Please reverse into the diesel road at the rear of the depot. Yep, I'm trying to do that. I'm now set for the diesel road. We can now back up. Let's do so. So looking at the, now I probably could, can I request please? Wait, what's going on? What's going on guys? What's going on? There we go, I wondered what was going on there. I requested the wrong signal. So my original request to pass was on the wrong signal. I was trying to uh, request the signal in front of me, which uh, naturally is not gonna let me go anywhere. Ten is our limit. I did not see a sign, so I'm going to say that I have no way to know that, and therefore I can't be responsible for that limit. I had no knowledge of that. Ironically enough, I was going 11.4 because I thought I was going to be at a 15. I wanted lots of room for the 15. So uh, that's what I was working on, a 15.
I don't understand what that one buffer is for. That is very interesting buffer placement. Very interesting. We are at the end of our track, however. We need to come to a stop back here, so I'm slowing down a wee bit. Did I just cross the buffer myself? I'm crossing something myself. What is this? Is that a switch? That's a switch, okay. And we have some bushes back here before our buffer, so we're just gonna stop right here, thank you very much. And that is where the scenario ends. Let's look at our train as we finish, shall we? Train number 6D87, finishing duty, signing off, and we are at the diesel loading point. Uh, buffer behind some bushes behind us and some barrels nearby. So yeah, this is where the diesel is all stored, obviously. Diesel barrels. And one of the uh, works buildings to our left, and I'm not sure what is to our right. So we're going to wait for our task to complete. We're going to uh, be congratulated on a job somewhat well done. So it was not a very elegant loading into the menu there, but it did load into the menu. I for didn't realize I was not going to get an ending task there or ending message. And I didn't even notice the top right corner. So the game froze while I was waiting to uh, give my goodbye on that. So we're back in the menu anyway. Uh, I got my speeding errors there. You saw those two at the end anyway. So they're going to be counting against me, even though one of them wasn't fair. No uh, limit noted. I was supposed to know, and I just hadn't played it yet, so I didn't know. Uh, so I got m noted for two speeding. I'm not sure where the freight and pat rate for the freight comfort level is being exceeded. I mean, we go from we're going from an uphill straight into a downhill, and that's how they work back then. They were bumpy, so uh, they were not as smooth back then. So maybe that's where it was. I don't know. Maybe I hit the brakes too hard at one point. I don't know. But in any case, the milk has been delivered, the ice cream is being made, and children everywhere are going to be happy. Yay! Make sure to tune in more for more uh, Train Sim Classic next time. Not sure if it's going to be more Port Road or if it's on a different version of the route, of course, or if it's going to be something else. Whatever it ends up being, it is going to be some lovely journey somewhere in, uh, I don't know, America, UK, Germany, Japan, China, somewhere, maybe Canada, I don't know. Uh, but we'll see where we end up going next time. Where am I going to take you? Stay tuned next time to find out. In the meantime, uh, if you are looking at the, Scott, at the Port Road playlist, there will be more for this on there, just for now, just these two videos, but there will be more on there. Uh, and stay tuned for that ahead on the playlist if you are on that playlist. In the meantime, uh, for everything else, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you, your part of the world. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed what you saw here today. And want to see more and hit that bell to know when I actually post something. It's usually every Friday, Saturday, and Tuesday is what I try to do. I try to let you know in advance if it's not going to be happening that way for some reason. In any case, I hope you have a wonderful day and your night once again. I will see you next time for more Train Sim Classic. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.